a Wikividi Documentaries production. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Enjoy. Richard Pryor Richard Franklin Lennox Thomas Pryor was an American stand-up comedian, actor, and social critic. Pryor was known for uncompromising examinations of racism and topical contemporary issues, which employed vulgarities and profanity, as well as racial epithets. He reached a broad audience with his trenchant observations and storytelling style, and is widely regarded as one of the greatest and most influential stand-up comedians of all time. Pryor's body of work includes the concert movies and recordings. Richard Pryor, Live and Smoke In, That Nigger's Crazy. Is it something I said? Bicentennial Nigger, Richard Pryor, Live in Concert. Richard Pryor, Live on the Sunset Strip, and Richard Pryor, Here and Now. As an actor, he starred mainly in comedies such as Silver Streak but occasionally in dramas, such as Paul Schrader's Blue Collar, or action films, such as Superman 3. He collaborated on many projects with actor Gene Wilder. Another frequent collaborator was actor-slash-comedian-slash-writer Paul Mooney. Pryor won an Emmy Award and five Grammy Awards. In 1974, he also won two American Academy of Humor Awards and the Writers Guild of America Award. The first ever Kennedy Center Marked Wayne Prize for American Humor was presented to him in 1998. He was listed at number one on Comedy Central's list of all-time greatest stand-up comedians. In 2017, Rolling Stone ranked him first on its list of the 50 best stand-up comics of all time. Early Life Born on December 1, 1940 in Peoria, Illinois, Richard Franklin Lennox Thomas Pryor grew up in the brothel run by his grandmother, Marie Carter, where his alcoholic mother, Gertrude L. was a prostitute. His father, Leroy Buck Carter Pryor, was a former boxer and hustler. After Gertrude abandoned him when he was 10, Pryor was raised primarily by Marie, a tall, violent woman who would beat him for any of his eccentricities. Pryor was one of four children raised in his grandmother's brothel. He was sexually abused at age 7, and expelled from school at the age of 14. While in Peoria, he became a Freemason at a local lodge. Pryor served in the U.S. Army from 1958 to 1960, but spent virtually the entire stint in an army prison. According to a 1999 profile about Pryor in The New Yorker, Pryor was incarcerated for an incident that occurred while he was stationed in West Germany. Angered that a white soldier was overly amused at the racially charged scenes of Douglas Sirk's film imitation of life, Pryor, and several other black soldiers beat and stabbed him, although not fatally. Relationships and Children Pryor was married seven times to five women. Pryor also had relationships with actresses Pam Greer and Margot Kidder. In 2018, Quincy Jones and Jennifer Lee claimed that Pryor had a sexual relationship with Marlon Brando, and that Pryor was open about his bisexuality with his friends. Pryor's daughter Rain later disputed the claim. In his autobiography, Pryor admitted to having a two-week sexual relationship with a transvestite, which he called, two weeks of being gay. Pryor had seven children with six different women. 1960s in 1963, Pryor moved to New York City and began performing regularly in clubs alongside performers such as Bob Dylan and Woody Allen. On one of his first nights, he opened for singer and pianist Nina Simone at New York's Village Gate. Simone recalls Pryor's bout of performance anxiety. Inspired by Bill Cosby, Pryor began as a middle-brow comic, with material far less controversial than what was to come. Soon. He began appearing regularly on television variety shows, such as The Ed Sullivan Show, The Merv Griffin Show, and The Tonight Show starring Johnny Carson. His popularity led to success as a comic in Las Vegas. The first five tracks on the 2005 compilation CD Evolution Slash Revolution, The Early Years, recorded in 1966 and 1967, capture prior in this period. In September 1967, Pryor had what he described in his autobiography Prior Convictions as an epiphany. He walked onto the stage at the Aladdin Hotel in Las Vegas, 
looked at the sold-out crowd, exclaimed over the microphone. What the fuck am I doing here? Comma and walked off the stage. Afterward, Pryor began working profanity into his act, including the word, nigger. His first comedy recording. The eponymous 1968 debut release on the Dove Slash Reprise label, captures this particular period, tracking the evolution of Pryor's routine. Around this time, his parents died, his mother in 1967 and his father in 1968. In 1969, Pryor moved to Berkeley, California, where he immersed himself in the counterculture and rubbed elbows with the likes of Huey P. Newton and Ishmael Reed. 1970s In the 1970s, Pryor wrote for such television shows as Sanford and Son, The Flip Wilson Show, and a 1973 Lily Tomlin special, for which he shared an Emmy Award. During this period, Pryor tried to break into mainstream television. He also appeared in several popular films, including Lady Sings the Blues, The Mac, Uptown Saturday Night, Silver Streak, Car Wash, Bingo Long Traveling All Stars and Motor Kings, Which Way Is Up, Greased Lightning, Blue Collar, The Muppet Movie. Pryor signed with the comedy-oriented independent record label Laugh Records in 1970, and in 1971 recorded his second album, Craps. Two years later, the relatively unknown comedian appeared in the documentary What Stacks, wherein he riffed on the tragic comic absurdities of race relations in Watts and The Nation. Not long afterward, Pryor sought a deal with a larger label, and he signed with Stax Records in 1973. When his third, breakthrough album, That Nigger's Crazy, was released, Laugh, which claimed ownership of Pryor's recording rights, almost succeeded in getting an injunction to prevent the album from being sold. Negotiations led to Pryor's release from his Laugh contract. In return for this concession, Laugh was enabled to release previously unissued material, recorded between 1968 and 1973, at will. That Nigger's Crazy was a commercial and critical success. It was eventually certified gold by the RIAA, and won the Grammy Award for Best Comedy Album at the 1975 Grammy Awards. During the legal battle, Stax briefly closed its doors. At this time, Pryor returned to reprise slash Warner Brothers Records which re-released The Niggas Crazy, immediately after Dot Is It Something I Said, his first album with his new label. Like That Niggas Crazy, the album was a hit with both critics and fans. It was eventually certified platinum by the RIAA and won the Grammy Award for Best Comedy Recording at the 1976 Grammy Awards. Pryor's release by Centennial Nigger continued his streak of success. It became his third consecutive gold album, and he collected his third consecutive Grammy for Best Comedy Recording for the album in 1977. With every successful album Pryor recorded for Warner, Laugh quickly published an album of older material to capitalize on Pryor's growing fame, a practice they continued until 1983. The covers of Laugh albums tied in thematically with Pryor movies, such as Are You Serious? For Silver Streak. The Wizard of Comedy for his appearance in The Wiz, and Insane for Stir Crazy. Pryor co-wrote Blazing Saddles, directed by Mel Brooks and starring Gene Wilder. Pryor was to play the lead role of Bart, but the film's production studio would not insure him, and Mel Brooks chose Cleavon Little, instead, before his horribly damaging 1980 freebasing incident. Pryor was about to start filming Mel Brooks's History of the World, Part 1 but was replaced at the last minute by Gregory Hines. Pryor was also originally considered for the role of Billy Ray Valentine on Trading Places, before Eddie Murphy won the part. In 1975, Pryor was a guest host on the first season of Saturday Night Live and the first black person to host the show. Pryor took longtime girlfriend, actress talk show host Catherine McKee, with him to New York, and she made a brief guest appearance with Pryor on SNL. He participated in the Word Association skit with Chevy Chase. He would later do his own variety show, The Richard Pryor Show, which premiered on NBC in 1977. The show was cancelled after only four episodes probably, because television audiences did not respond well to his show's controversial subject matter, 
and Pryor was unwilling to alter his material for network censors. During the short-lived series, he portrayed the first black president of the United States, spoofed the Star Wars Mos Eisley Cantina, took on gun violence, and in another skit, used costumes and visual distortion to appear nude. In 1979, at the height of his success, Pryor visited Africa. Upon returning to the United States, Pryor swore he would never use the word nigger in his stand-up comedy routine again. 1980s On the late evening of June 9, 1980, during the making of the film Stir Crazy, and after days of freebasing cocaine, Pryor poured 151 proof rum all over himself and lit himself on fire, while ablaze. He ran down Parthenia Street from his Los Angeles home, until being subdued by police. He was taken to a hospital, where he was treated for second and third degree burns covering more than half of his body. Pryor spent six weeks in recovery at the Grossman Burn Center at Sherman Oaks Hospital. His daughter, Rain, stated that the incident happened as a result of a bout of drug-induced psychosis. Pryor incorporated a description of the incident into his comedy show Richard Pryor, Live on the Sunset Strip. He joked that the event was caused by dunking a cookie into a glass of low-fat and pasteurized milk, causing an explosion. At the end of the bit, he poked fun at people who told jokes about it by waving a lit match and saying, What's that? Richard Pryor running down the street. After his final performance, Pryor did not stay away from stand-up comedy long. Within a year, he filmed and released a new concert film and accompanying album, Richard Pryor, Here and Now, which he directed himself. He also wrote and directed a fictionalized account of his life, Jojo Dancer, Your Life is Calling, which revolved around the 1980 freebasing incident. In 1983, Pryor signed a five-year contract with Columbia Pictures for $40 million, and he started his own production company, Indigo Productions. Softer, more formulaic films followed, including Superman 3, which earned Pryor $4 million. Brewster's Millions, Moving, and See No Evil, Hear No Evil. The only film project from this period that recalled his rough roots was Pryor's semi-autobiographic debut as a writer-director, Jojo Dancer, Your Life is Calling, which was not a major success. Despite a reputation for constantly using profanity on and off camera, Pryor briefly hosted a children's show on CBS called Pryor's Place. Like Sesame Street, Pryor's Place featured a cast of puppets, hanging out, and having fun in a surprisingly friendly inner-city environment along with several children and characters portrayed by Pryor himself. However, Pryor's Place frequently dealt with more sobering issues than Sesame Street. It was cancelled shortly after its debut, despite the efforts of famed puppeteers Sid and Marty Croft and a theme song by Ray Parker Jr. of Ghostbusters fame. Pryor co-hosted the Academy Awards twice and was nominated for an Emmy for a guest role on the television series Chicago Hope. Network censors had warned Pryor about his profanity for the Academy Awards and after a slip early in the program. A five-second delay was instituted when returning from a commercial break. Pryor is also one of only three Saturday Night Live hosts to be subjected to a rare five-second delay for his 1975 appearance. Pryor developed a reputation for being demanding and disrespectful on film sets, and for making selfish and difficult requests. In his autobiography Kiss Me Like a Stranger, Co-star Gene Wilder says that Pryor was frequently late to the set during filming of Stir Crazy, and that he demanded, among other things, a helicopter to fly him to and from set, because he was the star. Pryor was also accused of using allegations of on-set racism to force the hand of film producers into giving him more money, one day during our lunch hour in the last week of filming. The craft service man handed out slices of watermelon to each of us. Richard, the whole camera crew, and I sat together in a big sound studio eating a number of watermelon slices, talking and joking. As a gag. Some members of the crew used a piece of watermelon as a frisbee, and tossed it back and forth to each other. One piece of watermelon landed at Richard's feet. He got up and went home. Filming stopped. The next day, Richard announced that he knew very well what the significance of watermelon was. 
He said that he was quitting show business and would not return to this film. The day after that, Richard walked in, all smiles. I wasn't privy to all the negotiations that went on between Columbia and Richard's lawyers, but the camera operator who had thrown that errant piece of watermelon had been fired that day. I assume now that Richard was using drugs during Stir Crazy. He appeared in Harlem Nights, a comedy drama crime film starring three generations of black comedians. 1990s and 2000s In his later years starting in the early to mid-1990s, Pryor used a power-operated mobility scooter due to multiple sclerosis. He appears on the scooter in his last film appearance. A small role in David Lynch's Lost Highway playing an auto repair garage manager named Arnie. Rhino Records remastered all of Pryor's reprise and WB albums for inclusion in the box set. And it's deep too. The complete Warner Brothers recordings. In early 2000, Pryor appeared in the cold open of The Norm Show in the episode entitled, Norm vs. The Boxer. He played an elderly man in a wheelchair who lost the rights to in-home nursing when he kept attacking the nurses before attacking Norm himself. In 2002, Pryor and his wife slash manager, Jennifer Lee Pryor, won legal rights to all the laugh material, which amounted to almost 40 hours of reel-to-reel -reel analog tape. After going through the tapes and getting Richard's blessing, Jennifer Lee Pryor gave Rhino Records access to the tapes in 2004. These tapes, including the entire Craps album, form the basis of the February 1, 2005, double CD release Evolution slash Revolution, The Early Years. Health In November 1977, after many years of heavy smoking and drinking, Pryor suffered a mild heart attack. He recovered and resumed performing by January the following year. He was diagnosed with multiple sclerosis in 1986. In 1990, Pryor suffered a second heart attack while in Australia. He underwent triple heart bypass surgery in 1991. In late 2004, his sister said he had lost his voice as a result of his multiple sclerosis. However, on January 9, 2005, Pryor's wife, Jennifer Lee, rebutted this statement in a post on Pryor's official website, citing Richard as saying, I'm sick of hearing this shit about me not talking. Not true. I have good days. Bad days. But I still am a talking motherfucker. Death On December 10, 2005, nine days after his 65th birthday, Pryor suffered a heart attack in Los Angeles. He was taken to a local hospital after his wife's attempts to resuscitate him failed. He was pronounced dead at 7.58 a.m. PST. His widow Jennifer was quoted as saying, at the end, there was a smile on his face. He was cremated, and his ashes were given to his family. Forensic pathologist Michael Hunter believes Pryor's fatal heart attack was caused by coronary artery disease that was at least partially brought about by years of tobacco smoking. Legacy Jerry Seinfeld called Pryor, the Picasso of our profession, and Bob Newhart heralded Pryor as, the seminal comedian of the last 50 years. Dave Chappelle said of Pryor, you know those, like, evolution charts of man? He was the dude walking upright. Richard was the highest evolution of comedy. This legacy can be attributed, in part, to the unusual degree of intimacy Pryor brought to bear on his comedy. Retrospectives In 2002, a television documentary entitled The Funny Life of Richard Pryor depicted Pryor's life and career. Broadcast in the UK as part of the Channel 4 series Kings of Black Comedy, it was produced, directed, and narrated by David Upshall and featured rare clips from Pryor's 1960s stand-up appearances and movies such as Silver Streak, Blue Collar, Richard Pryor, Live in Concert, and Stir Crazy. Contributors included George Carlin, Dave Chappelle, Warby Goldberg, Ice-T, Paul Mooney, Joan Rivers, and Lily Tomlin. The show tracked down the two cops who had rescued Pryor from his free-basing incident. Former managers, and even school friends from Pryor's hometown of Peoria, Illinois. In the US, the show went out as part of the Heroes of Black Comedy series on Comedy Central, narrated by Don Cheadle. A television documentary, Richard Pryor, 
I Ain't Dead Yet, and Wanda Sykes, on Pryor's influence on comedy. On December 19, 2005, BET aired a Pryor special, titled The Funniest Man Dead or Alive. It included commentary from fellow comedians, and insight into his upbringing. A retrospective of Pryor's film work, concentrating on the 1970s, titled A Prior Engagement, opened at Brooklyn Academy of Music Cinemas for a two-week run in February 2013. Several prolific comedians who have claimed Pryor as an influence include George Carlin, Dave Attell, Martin Lawrence, Dave Chappelle, Chris Rock, Colin Quinn, Patrice O'Neill, Bill Hicks, Sam Kinison, Bill Burr, Louis C.K., Jerry Seinfeld, John Stewart, Eddie Murphy, Eddie Griffin, and Eddie Izzard. On May 31, 2013, Showtime debuted the documentary Richard Pryor, a mythologic directed by Emmy Award-winning filmmaker Marina Zenovich. The executive producers are Pryor's widow Jennifer Lee Pryor and Roy Ackerman. Interviewees include Dave Chappelle, Warby Goldberg, Jesse Jackson, Quincy Jones, George Lopez, Bob Newhart, Richard Pryor Jr. Lily Tomlin, and Robin Williams. From June 7 to 9, 2013, Sirius XM hosted Richard Pryor Radio, a three-day tribute which featured his stand-up comedy and full live concerts. Richard Pryor Radio replaced the foxhole for the duration of the event. Brought to you by Wikividi Documentaries. Would you like to know?